Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a hand-powered vacuum cleaner. First, let me show you how to do it and then I'll show you how it works. And I'd like to thank Mech Arena for sponsoring this video. I'll tell you a little bit more about them later on. Okay, so I'm gonna spread these styrofoam balls out here. Now watch what happens when I spin this vacuum hose around. Whoa. <laughs> Look at it just suck them up. Making it snow. I think we're gonna have to look at the slow-mo footage to see how much fun this actually was. Just look at the joy in my face. Okay, so that was cool, but not a very useful vacuum cleaner. If you wanna turn it into a vacuum cleaner, just put a cup on the end that has a bunch of holes poked in it, and then spin that end around, and that should collect whatever you want in there. Let's see if it works. Okay, let's try to clean all these up now. It's working. I hear I'm hitting the cup. So that was a lot of work, but it actually did function correctly. I was able to suck anything I wanted up into the cup just by spinning it around in the air like that. So what's going on here? How is it able to suck things up just by spinning it around in the air? The reason this is happening is because of something called Bernoulli's principle. And Bernoulli's principle states that as the fluid velocity increases, the pressure decreases. You can easily show this if you get two bottles and put them on a rolling surface and then blow in the center of them, they will go together. That's because the pressure on the outside is greater than on the inside because the fluid or the air in between is moving faster than the air on the outside. You can also show this decrease in pressure as well if you just blow over the top of a straw. Watch what happens when I blow over the top of it. You can see it goes up the straw a little bit, but watch what happens when we greatly increase the velocity. So I have a regular tube here going to an extremely narrow tip here. And I'm gonna put this narrow tip in this T-valve here. So I have a tight fit. So I can force air through this small tip here. So now the velocity is going to be extremely fast at the top of this tube. So I'm blowing air out. I bet I can even suck water all the way up into the tube. Here we go. <laughs> So the fluid velocity was so fast that it was able to suck the water all the way up through the tube and shoot it out the other end. What I've actually created here is called an aspirator. It's a way to create a vacuum just by using a moving fluid. Now at this point you may be a little bit confused when I compare this experiment to the one where I spin the tube around in the air. In this experiment, the air is moving very fast over the top of this tube, and so it sucks things up the tube. But with the vacuum hose here, the air is stagnant, and the vacuum hose is the thing moving around really fast. So the way this still creates suction is because velocity is relative. And so it doesn't matter whether this air is stagnant and this air inside is moving, as long as there's a difference between the two. And so when I spin this around in the air, if you're inside the tube, it seems like the air outside the tube is the thing moving. And so it's going to be at a lower pressure than inside the tube. And so you're gonna get sucked out of the tube. So what would happen if you stuck this out of your car window? Because in that scenario, you're sitting in your car with a bunch of air, and that air is actually moving through the outside air. But if you stick this out the window, then relative to that inside car air, the outside air is the thing moving. So does that mean we'll be able to suck something from the inside of the car to the outside of the car, or will it go the opposite direction? Before we continue our experiment, let me tell you a little bit about our sponsor, Mech Arena. If you're tired of playing games only to end up losing to some big pay-to-win player, then try Mech Arena. It's a competitive five versus five game where you progress based on how you play and your skill actually matters. Mech Arena is balanced for all players and winning depends on player skill, not on spending money. You can see the progress path here. All the mechs, weapons, maps, and game modes are available to everybody. There are tons of free ways to get resources and progress in the game, like events and daily objectives. So you can see how I can take on the bigger mechs with smarter gameplay and weapon combinations. In this game, everyone is on an even playing field at the start of the battle. Winning is about being a better player. Mech Arena has awesome in-game events as well as a great login rewards program, which you definitely don't want to miss out on. So Mech Arena is completely free to play on Android and iOS right now. You can use the link in my description or scan my QR code to get one Steel Reaper skin, 500 A coins, 70,000 credits to help you kickstart your game. And if you're quick, you can add me as your friend using this username and we can play some matches together. So don't wait around. Now let's get back to our experiment. Okay, so I have the hose going out the window now. And then on this end, I have my balls. So let's see if these actually get sucked into the tube out the window. Okay, they're getting 
ruffled around, but not getting sucked out. Okay, let's pick up speed here. Uh, yep. <laughs> and they're gone. <laughs> okay, so as soon as I increase my speed, they're gone. So what this means now is if you want to vacuum your car and don't have a vacuum, just stick one end of the hose out the window and you can vacuum while you're driving. So it still worked in the car because on the end that was in the car, that air was still stagnant compared to the air inside of the tube. And on the outside, the air was flowing past it really fast, so compared to the air in the tube, that had a high velocity, and hence it had a lower pressure. Now I've explained what the Bernoulli principle does, but I haven't explained why it does that. Why does a moving fluid exert a lower pressure than a stagnant fluid? To understand this, let's look at the air molecules on an individual molecule basis, and let's just model them like they're little tiny balls. So let's say we have a pipe like this. If we have a fluid flowing through this pipe here, it has to go faster in the center portion here because it has a smaller diameter so it has to speed up. And then it can slow down once it gets outside of the pipe. So that means that P1 is going to equal P3, but P2 is going to be less than P1 and P3. But why does this happen? Well, if you picture air molecules as little tiny balls moving, but any molecule that ends up making it in this smaller diameter is most likely going to have a velocity that was moving more this direction. If it was moving up like this, it's gonna hit these chamber walls. So statistically, it's not gonna end up going in the tube as often. So this means the balls that are outside of this tube here, they're gonna hit the balls with velocity aimed more at the direction of the walls. Whereas the balls that are in here, they're gonna have more of a velocity component going this direction and less going this direction towards the walls. So this means their velocity component going into the wall is going to be a lot smaller than the balls outside in the larger tube. So for example, if this ball's flying through the air, it'll hit the wall, go back this way. Hit the wall, hit the wall, hit the wall. But then if it ends up going this way, it's going to hit the walls like this. So you'll notice that when it was in the smaller portion of it, it didn't hit the walls as hard because it was kind of angled this direction. So the actual narrowing of the pipe is the thing that lowers the pressure. It has to narrow down so it sends some of the molecules back this way or sends them up against the walls and so it exerts a higher pressure. Now if we make this tube extremely small, then the only molecules that are going to make it into that tube are ones that happen to be going very straight and so they're barely going to knock into that wall at all. And so they're not going to exert a lot of pressure on the wall. And remember, once the molecule gets outside of here, it's hitting other molecules. So eventually it's going to slam into the walls and create that pressure as well. So the, this and this will always have the same pressure, but this is going to have the lower pressure. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet, and also hit the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest video. And check out Action Lab Shorts, which is my second channel where I do videos similar to this channel, but I do them in a lot shorter amount of time. I do them in less than a minute. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.